Hello, and welcome to chapter 3141, which is looking at heterotrophic nutrition of your favorite multicellular organisms. This would include no, um, uh, fungi as well as animals, and specifically looking at the digestive organs of a number of different animals. So we'll keep on going. So the, the heterotrophs are basically organisms that need other organisms, multicellular organisms, in order to feed. And this include herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Uh, the diets of these organisms need to contain all the essential um, uh, nutrients, that is, the fats and amino acids and, and kind of everything else. In animals, we see 20 different amino acids that are required. Uh, if you don't get all those, you get what's called a protein deficiency. When we have 13, roughly in humans, 13 essential vitamins that we need to get from our diet, our bodies do not create those. And I'm going to go over this as well. Digestion is a process by which food is converted to substances that we can be absorbed into our body. And so, again, a hamburger and a protozoan and grass can't be absorbed by our body. What happens with all of these is they get converted into their components, which include fatty acids, simple sugars, and amino acids. And then these then can be used to either create ATP through a process called cell respiration, or they can be used as the raw materials to actually create the body as well in the tissues and kind of everything else. Uh, so again, I showed you this graph here on food uh, stages of food processing where we have mechanical digestion, physically breaking apart the pieces of food then would be chemically digested through a process that we call enzymatic hydrolysis. Um, these small molecules would then be absorbed through the GI tract into the, the body, into the circulatory system, and then undigested materials would be released. Also, the body also can put certain waste products into the this stream in order to get rid of that materials and so we call this ingestion digestion absorption and elimination the four processes of um, um, basically this this this, this setup uh, so in digestion of food the first is if the food is first mixed with saliva uh, and saliva has in it the, the enzyme salivary am amylase uh, enzymes are to digestion basically the proteins that do the work and they actually break things apart uh, without the enzymes basically the reactions would not occur and so when you have a polymer that's made up of a monomer of many sugars in order to get those monomers out you have to have an enzyme that will kind of break this down and so again when we talk about this digestion there's two modes we have the physical breakdown again like a jackhammer physically breaking things into smaller pieces adding a little bit of water and actually Actually adding the enzymes to it. In a chemical digestion, basically, we use large, um, we have enzymes that break down large molecules, but also some of the acids and some of the other things. So what do you think teeth chewing is? Physical uh, digestion. Uh, again, things like the gizzard that birds have are this part of this phys physical digestion. Uh, in our mouths, we have uh, the, the saliva glands, which actually produce an amylase, an enzyme, that kind of help break things down. And so, uh, again, that's very critical. Um, Single-celled organisms, um, uh, very similarly, use uh, phagocytosis, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, again, not all organisms do both. Uh, again, what do you need for digestion? Do you always need teeth? And again, here is an example of a sea anemone eating a sea star. Do they um, both have teeth? Not necessarily. Uh, we looked at the amoeba and how they engulf their prey and how they digest stuff. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about extracellular versus intracellular digestion. Intracellular is where the food is digested on the inside of the cells, and extracellular digestion, the food is um, digested on the outside of the cells. And so, again, we're going to talk about animals, and we're going to talk about fungi. And again, many protists, paramecium, etc., uh, have this intracellular digestion. Now, certain of our cells are capable of this intracellular digestion, but we don't use that to digest our food. We use an extra, uh, extracellular process. But again, we hold that food inside of our body so that food will not go away. And again, it's done in a cavity. And in, um, again, in fungi, we don't necessarily do that. So here's in a tree of life, we're looking at fungi. These are organisms that are all similar to us. Again, the, the, the plants make their own food. They're autotrophs. And the heterotrophs are the fungi and the animals. And again, there are some um, heterotrophs that are uh, protist. Um, we don't see those. Uh, again, be aware of the fungal body structure. Be aware of this stuff here that we call mycelium here, and that a mushroom is just a combination of all those hyphae together. Uh, what's really kind of interesting is the fungi are a little bit different in that they grow into their food and digest their food in place and take the nutrients in, inside of them. And um, again, no mouth, uh, no physical digestion. Um, I'm not going to go over uh, this particular one, but the answer is fungal enzymes, very similar. So in animals, we look at the animals.
animals. Um, we have, again, it's extracellular digestion, but we take our food and we incorporate it into a, a, a cavity. And here we see the gastrovascular cavity of cnidarians. We see the gastrovascular cavity in here of the flatworms that we looked at. And so again, we talk about this. What's the advantage? Um, advantage of having um, a complete digestive system, that means a mouth and an anus, is that we can um, uh, make specialized regions. Uh, again, when your mouth is your anus, you can't necessarily uh, specialize uh, regions, and so it makes it a little bit harder. And we'll kind of go on. But the, again, they're, they're able to digest. They're able to do the same things that we can. However, uh, in here, when we have a complete alimentary canal, um, we can do a, a lot more. And so, again, it's a directional tube. We have a separate mouth and anus. We have many specialized parts, uh, including things like the crop, which we see in both of these organisms here, which is a small little pouch that's able to hold some material. And we have a gizzard, which is, again, is able to help in digestion. If you notice, a, a, um, uh, this worm and the bird here do not have teeth, and they are not able to grind the food like we are able to, to do. And so they have the gizzard. So we'll talk about that. Um, Again, there are certain things that we can't digest. Uh, cellulose, uh, which is a fiber. Again, do, do you know why we can't digest cellulose? It's basically we don't have the energies in order to do that. It's a very big carbohydrate. It's a very hard to digest. And actually, all animals act enzymes that will break down cellulose. However, there's lots of animals, anything from uh, ants to, um, to rabbits that eat a lot of cellulotic material that seem to be able to digest them. How are they able to do this? Again, take a look at the cow, which is a rudiment that has a, a, a stomach that's a multi-chambered stomach. Basically, what they do is they break down the food, physically break down the food, so that bacteria and other protists can digest the cellulose, and then they um, uh, chew up these organisms, and then that's actually what they eat. Um, uh, rabbits have symbionts, but they don't have the special four-chambered um, 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 uh, uh, stomach that the cows have, so they actually um, uh, eat their own feces uh, in a process called coprophagy. And so when they eat it, they have two different types of poops, one um, that has the symbionts in it and one that's after the symbionts are done. Uh, again, termites have this kind of same thing. They have this kind of rectal pouch, in which case um, uh, they have the bacteria and the protozoans that are going inside of there. Um, again, which animals would you expect to find in this is human digestion? Um, I want you to be able to basically, um, since this is a class and we talk a little bit about the human body as, as basically a, a typical um, uh, organismal body, I want you to be able to follow food as it goes from the mouth um, uh, down to the uh, anus and what organs are involved and kind of what they do. Um, Again, we have a hollow tube uh, that's roughly about 30 feet long within, within us and has two openings. We have the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine. Um, and you need to be able to do what those, uh, see what those do. The mouth is responsible for physical um, uh, breakdown of food. You need to know what the tongue and the teeth do and the various parts, the glottis and epiglottis. Uh, here we can look at the various different types of teeth that we see. And our carnivores are going to have different types of teeth than us uh, omnivores are. And so again, take a look at those. Um, I would like you to be able to identify the different types of teeth that we have. And again, what they do in, in terms of what the uh, uh, teeth are made of. Uh, uh, what's really kind of interesting is, is that when you look at something like a sandwich, there's many, many different types of molecules that are inside the sandwich. And then what our bodies do is basically physically and chemically break down those molecules in order for us to be able to absorb those molecules. Know how we swallow and uh, move the food down into our stomach. Know the basic structure of uh, basically what a uh, the tube is that makes up uh, our, our intestines and uh, and how those particular ones work. The esophagus is put down into, um, into, the, into the stomach. Uh, have an idea of how the stomach works. Uh, we kind of go through this. And then, uh, again, in our mouth, we have the mastication, physical breakdown. In the uh, esophagus, we're basically just moving it from one area to another. In the stomach, we're churning. We're producing things like pepsin, which produces uh, proteases, which kind of break down uh, proteins. The pancreas um, and the gallbladder are responsible for um, kind of helping break things down uh, a little bit more and kind of know what parts they are. Again, be able to describe how the um, 
uh, microvilli work and they allow the surface of this to, to go and basically we have relatively few one two maybe three cell lengths uh, in order for that food to go into that uh, capillary uh, layer um, I can't ooh, I, we should be done with this the, the final 24 hours basically we remove the the water uh, again here's the appendix which is the uh, um, um, linking between this, the large intestine and, and the small intestine. Um, uh, we have resonant bacteria in the gut that help breaks down the material. It produces some vitamins for us, also produces some um, gas. Basically the water is absorbed so that we don't lose too much water. We have this dry uh, sphincter by dry, uh, dry feces. Um, again, um, we'll go over this. Uh, some organisms uh, basically and, and the next one I want to go real quick is talk about like uh, things like nutrition and what we will see is certain organisms like this uh, reindeer here will eat old antlers why do you think they eat those antlers well again it's to get the nutrients that are inside there and some that sometimes we feel that some of these kind of weird diets that certain organisms have is because they are lacking uh, nutrition uh, again take a look at nutrition and fungal uh, uh, life cycles uh, the difference between hyphae uh, again there's various types of specialized uh, hyphae that we have and so we talked about this um, uh, again be able to recognize the different types of skulls and what types of organisms that are our uh, again uh, have an idea of the difference between an herbivore versus a carnivore digestive system the foods that an herbivore uh, herbivore eats are very a lot harder to digest than the food that a carnivore eats and it's um, different okay uh, invertebrates are a little bit uh, different. Again, here we have that gastrovascular cavity. And if you look at that food, that food is is basically going to be exposed to almost all those particular cells. So this uh, uh, particular organism doesn't need a um, kind of a circulatory system. And the gastrovascular cavity acts a little bit like a uh, circulatory system. Again, have an idea of the different types that we have in here. Here's an overview of the human system that we have. We have the mouth, the salivary glands. These are accessory organs. Uh, the mouth breaks down the food, starts the chemical digestion, and the soft can moves it to the stomach where we have a continuation of the chemical digestion. The small intestine, we have continuous di uh, chemical digestion. Um, we have accessory organisms, the gallbladder, the liver, the pancreas, which all are involved in the breakdown and the absorption of these materials. In the large intestine, um, we are basically doing some secondary fermentation. We're um, uh, absorbing in the, um, uh, the materials, and so that the materials are collected here, and they are relatively dry okay and so again it's the human um, system that we uh, need to know about um, I'm not going to get that much into some things like the earthworm but have an idea of how the earthworm and that works carbohydrate protein and nucleic acid and fat digestion to have an idea of kind of what's those going on uh, this is looking at it and that's basically uh, about it that we will look at and we'll uh, talk about these other processes a little bit later and, and again the metabolism which can give us the difference between a, a uh, fat mouse and a not fat mouse.